Hey, good evening. It's the Portugal Business Club with me and my Barcelo Los Cockrell here, but not just us two. We have a third wheel on this vehicle this evening. Good evening to you. And I think you you are born, if not in the town of Barcelo, near it, right, Vitor? Yes, I was born in a, a parish called Galego Santa Maria. Actually, yeah. the um, the parish that originated the, the Barcelo Rooster. Excellent. So you really are from the epicenter of this character who sits on my shoulder this evening. So you've seen this all your life. Correct. Correct. And when I was about eight, that's when I moved, I would say, into Barcelos proper. But the weird thing about Barcelos is that, uh, you know, the surrounding areas, technically, uh, the area where I live is called Arcuzillo. Yeah. Um, but everybody just called it Barcelos. Like, nobody really knows where Barcelos starts and ends. It's kind of like the the center with uh, the market and all of that, but we just call the whole surrounding area uh, Barcelos. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Somebody so close to the iconic, what, what would it be called? The emblem, motif of Portugal, um, a man from that place. Um, and another way in which um, people can connect to you on a deep and soulful level is probably because you've had a NIF number all your life. Although I don't know if the, I don't know if the scheme is, is that old. Um, but we are be, we will be talking about the NIF number tonight. Uh, I'm going to set a bit of context by playing an old video, which is about 10 minutes long, which tells you the difference between the NIS, and the SNS and the NIF number. And of course, there's a brand new guide, which is causing us so much excitement um, through, around the country and the world uh, for people who are thinking of getting a NIF number. So we will deep dive into that, but we'll keep it lighthearted as Vitor and I do on the Portugal Business Club. Uh, before we get started, Vitor, have you had any astounding thoughts or insights uh, well, I was going to say within the business realm, but I mean, any at all, really, since we last spoke. I mean, definitely. And today we I <laughs> had immense uh, learning opportunities, actually. Uh, spoke with an EXP agent from America as well. Uh, we were talking about investing and it gave me a whole other perspective. Then cool. I spoke to, uh, to one of my friends called Stephen White. He also helps, um, um, you know, people from other countries invest in Portugal. Yeah, And uh, he showed me some of the spreadsheets that he has and all of that, that really made me change, you know, completely think another way um, on more ways of investing in real estate rather than, you know, the conventional and traditional. Uh, for example, ways where you can um, monetize real estate, you know, become sort of a landlord and all of these things without actually owning real estate. Oh, interesting. It's Stephen White. I've seen his name on, on Facebook. He's, he's you, pretty you, you need to meet him at the very least. Uh, I, I actually, when I was spe speaking to him to, with, with him today, I was like, maybe I should tell him to come, come on and call. He should join us, so, definitely. Um, yeah, he should come and join us uh, one, one Tuesday. It is Tuesday, isn't it? One, one Tuesday evening. Okay, I'll, should, uh, should... I'll have a chat with him to, to see if he can uh, come over next Tuesday. Yes, because he put up a very interesting meme about um, rent, renting, the, the buy-to-rent market in Portugal. I think I saw that only this afternoon. Oh, uh, that's another thing, actually, uh, from what we discussed today. Uh, yeah. I did not see that one, but I mean, there are so many ways of doing it. And one time I was talking also to, to an investor, and this is uh, another insight that I'd like to share here, which is a lot of people, you know, are upset at this investor because uh, you know they say that uh, they bring prices up and all of these things. But he brings a really good point, which is, I mean, the thing is, what what I am doing, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? What I'm doing, anybody can do. And in fact, we can help those people do it too. Okay. So it's like, there's an opportunity for everyone, uh, but, um, and you, you know what? That's probably a, a good topic. It's not an insight that I've had recently, but probably a good topic to discuss is this myth that it takes money to make money. Okay. The more I learn and the more I grow, the more I find that that is not true. Right? Cardone well, says that it doesn't take money, it takes courage to make money. Okay. Or well, I was going to ask you to hold the... Uh the answer to that question until ah. later in the show. But okay, courage it is. That's fine. Uh, good evening to the members of the Portugal Club who are sitting backstage uh, and, and who are watching the show from the um, from the wings. It's like a theatrical performance and they have a, a, a seats in the wings uh, this evening. So thank you, Portugal Club members, for joining us for this, for this introduction 
into Portugal's NIF number, which we will get into uh, real soon. And they're sending us messages uh, from the wings as well. Good evening, Benoit. Thank you very much. Great to see you, Christina and John are there. Um, thank you very much for coffee in my Good Morning Portugal mug from Mrs. M as well. Portugal, Good Morning Portugal mugs will be on the way. Careful, hot cup of coffee over my lap. That could end badly. But thank you very much, Mrs. M. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, Colleen Murphy, also a new member over on YouTube. Thank you very much for your support, Colleen Murphy. We do now have memberships um, on uh, YouTube as well. And Sue's a live show during my daytime, so can't help but be here. Thank you, Suze. A too slippery, sloshy to go out with new wet snow. So here I am. Hi, all. Good evening to you, Bernoit. And hi, Carl. Hi, Vitor from Suze as well. So keep those questions coming in. When we get into the NIF discussion, do ask us questions about uh, the NIF or anything to do with uh, money, finance, business here in Portugal, and we will do our best to help you this evening. But what I want to do with faces being made by me and Vitor on the side of the screen, is play a video of about 10 minutes, but it is I think it's a pretty good guide. And it's had quite a few views on YouTube of the difference between the NIF, the NIS, and the SNS. So uh, if you want to stop this um, at any time, Vitor, to clarify or, or um, say something. Oh, another new member. Thank you, Mike, for joining us as well. That's really kind of you for becoming a member as well. Um, yeah, Vitor, if you want to uh, pause the video and say, hold on a minute, Carl, what you said back in 2020 isn't strictly speaking true or has changed feel free to uh, press the buzzer or or, or gesticulate it. okay all right so here we go carl munson of goodmorningportugal.com with another presentation for you this time it's the portuguese numbers game as you can see there uh, this is based on my uh, i was going to say pain uh, it's based on my experience from the 7th of march as you can see let me just give me a pointer ready yeah 7th of march uh, last thursday where uh, this is all connected to getting a driving license, which then triggered the need for a medical number, which then set us off on a whole adventure, which I don't need to go into right now, maybe touch on parts of that as we go through the presentation here. But yes, suffice to say, the big lesson on Thursday was that an SNS number is not the same as a social security number. And whilst we're about it, let's look at the SNS number, the NIST number and the NIF number. So you know the difference and you don't have to go through the same um, trials and tribulations that I did. Uh, that's what Good Morning Portugal was all about, is making it a little bit easier uh, for those who want to settle and explore a new life in Portugal. So let's go. Uh, we're looking at these three different numbers and acronyms. So your SNS is your basically your health number, Servicio Nacional de Sold, and number two, and we'll look at these one by one, but number two is the NIST number, which is the social security number, which I went looking for thinking it was the same as number one. So there's a big difference and you should know the difference so you don't um, prolong your time and energy spent in the search for these respective numbers and codes. Uh, so yes, the NIST number, numero de identificación de segurança social. It's going quite well there. Towards the end, I tailed off a bit, didn't I? And of course, the NIF number, you may already know about that, but just in case you don't, I've included it here because it's quite important. Um, it is the fiscal number. Also, sometimes when you're in um, your uh, little shop or any shop uh, and you're doing your supermarket shopping, uh, you may hear or you may even be asked yourself uh, for your contribuent, uh, which is your uh, fiscal number, your NIF number, uh, numero de identificación fiscal. And I must say at this point, my caveat is this is a presentation based on my personal experience, March of 2019, just last week. Your experiences and the regulations of Portugal may vary, especially after Brexit. Uh, when it was 2019. I thought it was March 2020. It was March 2019 when I made this. My goodness, that is some time ago. How's it going so far, Vitor? Would you agree with what I've said? Yep. The only thing, uh, addition that uh, that I would have is that uh, the SNS is typically referred to as numero de utente, which utent. is like patient number. Okay. Numero de utente. Let's continue. Thank you for that. And I need to point out, it's funny to say NIF number. It's kind of like saying ATM machine, automatic yes. teller machine machine. Oh, the number. <laughs> they don't need to repeat the number. Okay. <laughs> the automatic teller machine machine. Okay, I get it. I, I don't know if I'm going to stop that habit now, though. Yeah, you probably won't, and I'll keep uh, making fun of it. So, go okay, on. thank you. Carry on. I shouldn't swap anyway. Okay, so number one, the SNS. This is your health number. It will look like this uh, from the Ministerio de Salud. And you, uh, well, this is why I needed one because I needed a medical. We went to get a medical. 
And we couldn't get the medical because you need this number, which is your health number. So let's think of it more as health rather than social security, which we'll come on to. So for me personally and my wife, Mrs. Munson, we needed this to get the medical to do the swap uh, like for like, I think before the Brexit date for a Portuguese license, you need to take a medical with you, which we discovered uh, after we'd queued up for some time uh, to do the swap. And this is what you'll find. And this is what I'm trying to save you time uh, with um, is so you know what to take on any given occasion when you're trying to do these things so that you don't get a knockback. Uh, and that you waste a load of time, okay? But more about um, Portuguese bureaucracy and how to manage it a little later on in this presentation. This SNS number, you will be able to get from your local, it's probably best to go to your local Centro de Sal, your health center, okay? Go to the one near to where you live with your NIF number, so we'll come on to that, but that's uh, number three here. Um, I would say the NIF is good to get. Um, as soon as you arrive in Portugal, if you're planning on staying here. Um, so go get your NIF number because you'll need that to get this SNS number. And uh, what I think I needed was a passport, I needed identification and the NIF number, but I also took along the residencias, which I don't think you need, but it's always good to take everything with you just in case, including your parents and grandparents. Number two. Now, so when I stay Only joking about parents and grandparents. That is not necessary at every meeting, is it, in Portugal? Um, I'm not that I've heard. <laughs> okay, we'll continue. Then. Let's step foot inside the Centro de Saud, as, I, as you see here, the health center. The security man, when I said, can you give us, which I thought was a social security number, he sent me to the social security center, the Seguranza Social. So we went down there. And uh, we had, a, I've got to say, a rather frosty reception there. I tried to give my most charming smile um, and uh, easygoing, happy-go-lucky kind of British uh, um, spirit to it, but it didn't really work. Um, and it's, I mean, I've got to say, you know, this is based on my personal experience. It was a bit like going into a social security office in the UK where the onus is on you to kind of, you know, guilty until proven innocent kind of vibe, I suppose. You know, these are places where there's a lot of needy people um, and the atmosphere is a little bit suspicious, I think, and on the defensive and a little bit difficult on both sides. So with a little bit of that, an outbreaks of, of humanity and bonhomie. Um, but the, this is the problem. And this is why I'm making this presentation is because you don't need this to get a medical. This is not what you need when you're asked to get your health number. This is when you're signing up. And, I, and I've read on, on, online, and I know how dangerous that is, that you need to do this if you're settling in Portugal anyway. I've not heard that before until I did the research for this presentation that you need this NIS number uh, and you need to register with Seguranza Social. Okay, Vitor, are you recommending to your clients that they get a social security number straight away? Uh, in fact, I don't, I'm not even entirely sure how that is used. Like, uh, I don't remember ever using that number myself personally. Right. Um, because so, if, you, if you were likely, if you, God forbid, if you were in, in some sort of incident, it would be your identity card that would be the first point of contact, right? From emergency staff, not your, not a number for your social security, right? Right, right. I mean, it seems like maybe the, uh, the thing it might be more used for is like for your, I guess, contributions or something like that. Um, but you also have the NIF, which is for, Actually, I, I, I should do some research on that, but um, long story yes. short... Right. Next week, we'll... we'll, we'll so on, on, our, on our cards, we have all of those numbers. We just use the NIF if we want to use it for the most part, and then the um, número do tempo, the SNS, if uh, we're going to some healthcare place, but I don't recall ever using this number. Okay, if you, I think if you get, if we're going to get unemployment benefit, it might be this one, mightn't it? It's for yeah, benefits, perhaps. social security, as the name suggests. But in in order of hierarchy, then it looks like the the NIF is the most important, followed by the UTENT number, then followed by this one, the NIS number. Let's continue. So yeah, it may you save you a lot of pain later if you do, uh, which we ended up doing. Uh, and I was told it was pretty tricky, actually. Uh, you know, and that's my bad. I don't speak Portuguese, so why should it be easy? Um, but um, I discovered that uh, we were going to register the children as well. 
And then if you register, the children get an allowance. You get your family allowance. But I, I'm not sure we're going to go into that. And I think this is all means-tested sort of stuff, uh, which by the grace of God, we don't need at the moment. So we got as far as registering for both me and for Mrs. Munson. And then they come in the post later on. Okay. So I've read you need it, but you don't need it for your driving license and the medical side. What you need is that one. SNS for medical stuff. NIS for social security stuff. And finally, your NIF number uh, needed right. to be a perfect and model resident uh, for your financial accounting. And this is the one you use. You can go online and go through portal das finanzas.gov.pt. Um, so that's what you need. Oh, there's my kids now. I just mentioned them, didn't I? Um, and so, yeah, before I go on to managing bureaucracy um, in Portugal, let's just quickly go through those. The Health, the health number, number one, SNS. The social security is the NIS and the fiscal number is the NIF, okay? And there they are. Now, um, here's a quick guide to Portuguese bureaucracy. Um, do we want to do a quick guide to Portuguese bureau bureaucracy? Well, that's a bit of a contradiction in terms, isn't it? A quick guide. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I may add a, a quick note to what you were saying earlier uh, about, uh, you know, the, the cold welcome. It feels like the one part where you're not guaranteed Portuguese warmth and people caring about you and excited for you and having a smile, particularly if you're a foreigner. I mean, you, you'll probably get more smiles as a foreigner in general, I think, um, than if you're a native. But government facilities and whatever, you know, particularly those that have more interaction with the public, that's more likely to have someone, you know, with a bad attitude and whatever and just doing their job. And you need to have something done in five minutes, but they spend half an hour arguing with you that you need to book an appointment online <laughs> before they can do that, even though there's nobody there waiting for that <laughs> thing. So yeah. So it's not it's not personal. It's not national. It's not. It's it's really not. Okay. And and th to be fair, I was in the country only just over a year, I think, less than 18 months. So I didn't know how it worked at that point. And this is this this is the conclusion I came to after a little bit of dealing with such offices. So I'll play a little bit more, uh, which I think is quite a useful guide. And yeah, I mean, why should people be cheerful? They don't have to be, do they? And, and it's easy to take it personally as a foreigner. And also mm -hmm. something I've learned since then, of course, is when you say, um, you know, do you speak English to somebody in a government office? that could put them on the back foot. If they, if if they get yeah. stressed about that possibility, of course, that's going to make it a, a possibly a little bit more difficult. So, you know, the more Portuguese you can speak, uh, the better. And ask if you can speak English actually in Portuguese will be a really good start. Because, you know, the, we're all humans, aren't we? Yeah. And if we, when we put on there the back foot... Can, uh, there can be another reason for that as well, uh, which is since a lot of these things have to do with, you know, laws and whatever, um, on some cases, they they may even actually be told, hey, even if you speak a foreign language fluently, you can only talk to people here in Portuguese because it's Portuguese, that's the law and whatever. Yeah. If there's a misunderstanding, you know, uh, so it's all like those things, which ends up in, in many times impacting, you know, the individual. Um, many times that might not even really be an issue because a person will still try and speak a language you understand to explain things to you. But some of them might be more strict, uh, more like lawful good or lawful neutral or whatever. And just know if it's this way that needs to be done, it's this way that needs to be done. And I think I've met one that wouldn't even um, explain that to you in English. She would just say, you know, she would just speak Portuguese, even though she could speak another language. Wow. Just Amazing. something to, to be wary of. Uh, yeah. But again, if there's ever anything that comes up, I, I don't mind if you guys give me a call. Hey, Vitor, you know, I'm just here at the uh, the Social Security office or whatever. I just need to explain this thing to the lady. We're not getting along. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to help out with her a little bit. Good on you, mate. Oh, stand by. You, I'm sure you... I'm going to regret this, aren't I? You are. You so are. <laughs> okay. So oh, this... 100 bucks a month. I will provide phone support. <laughs> recurring subscription. <laughs> There you go. Right, Bonoiti from Bagandi. We were, here we go. Here's a use case for the NIST number. 
uh, NISNA, but we were asked for our NIS when applying for that Fundo Ambiental grant towards energy saving things from the Portuguese government. So there's one reason why mm. you might need to have one. So there's, that's great. Thank you, Bairandi. Um, and um, oh, look at this. I've got cephalus, no cure. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that's very helpful. Take my prescription here for that, Tabitha. Thank you and good evening to you. A quick guide to Portuguese bureaucracy. I'm not going to play all of this. I just want to play the first bit. And let me just say, and so many of the forums are made of this stuff of complaints and people's problems with the bureaucracy. Uh, bear in mind, no matter how hard it gets, it's still better than being a caveman. If all you've got to worry about is gathering pieces of paper, you're a pretty lucky guy compared to our ancestors, aren't you? So come on, man up and go do it and stop whinging. Uh, to help you with that, I would say allow time, allow plenty of time. In fact, number five, make a day of it. We used to go to the seaside and to places of um, Portuguese interest, you know, like tourist spots, but now we tend to go to a lot of uh, bureaucratic appointments, but we allow a whole day for that. And if we get off lightly and things go well, then we spend time in the town that we go to and extend it as a kind of tourist visit. So I hope you get the gist of that. Allow plenty of time. Queue up and take your ticket. Um, later on in the day, when I went back to finance us, um, because what was I trying to do? Oh, yeah, register for self-employment. Um, I went in. It shuts at 3.30. I went in at quarter past three. I picked up a ticket that was B21, and I saw that they were serving B12. That's too long to leave a family in a car for, isn't it? Anyway, so take your ticket, sit down, and find your zen. You know, everyone's being told to be more mindful, aren't they, and practice meditation. Here's your chance. Do it in Portugal, in the waiting rooms of, of the, of the uh, institutions and the administration. Take your ticket, find your zen, get served eventually. Um, if you do go in uh, and it shuts at 3.30, you won't get chucked out at 3.30. They do, I think, see everybody who's bothered to queue up before 3.30. Okay, so bear that in mind, is that you won't be booted out as soon as it reaches closing time. The doors will close and then I think, generally speaking, people will get processed after that point who checked in before the closing time, in my case, 3.30. And at the end, of course, say, obrigado. Uh, or obrigada if you're a lady. And yes, seriously, make a lot of time, make a day of it, and kind of man up and crack on. Um, the the thing here really is that, you know, you might want to be a bit rebellious. You might want to not be quite as disciplined about it as you could be. I think it might cause you pain later if you don't. That's um, That would be my advice. Um, so thank you for listening. Obrigado. Um, I've got another report. I think um, we can do without that last bit there, but there was your distinctions between NIFNIS and SNS. So not too bad there, uh, I think, Vito. Yep, and about that caveman thing, it reminded me of a meme I saw the other day, which was like our great-grandparents literally had to kill bears with axes, and we have anxiety attacks for having to make a phone call. Exactly, yes. We're okay. Yeah, I mean, what you We're said okay. seemed like a good explanation, in particular the part about the bureaucracy, yeah. Make and a day out of it. Yeah, yeah you were nodding. Day. You were nodding when I said that. So that's that's um some. I mean, I often see Portuguese people who are obviously workers who who pop out of work to go to a government office to try and do something quite quickly. It doesn't always end well, does it? So the more time you can allow, the better, right? Yeah, it it depends on where you're going, uh, when you're going, and what you're going for. Uh, sometimes it's going to be really, really quick. Um, Many times when I go to like financiers here in Ponte de Lima, sometimes to help a client get a NIF or get something sorted out in those regards, you know, typically there's like one person in front of us or whatever. So it's relatively quick, but we have been in situations where it took a few hours uh, to get anything processed. So it really depends on where you're going and time of the day. And, um, and yeah. And that was 2019. Um, things haven't changed. Well, the world's changed a lot since 2019. Uh, a little I, bit, just a tad. I didn't expect a pandemic shortly after I'd moved to Portugal. But wow, um, it's so interesting to uh, see that. And whilst the, um, yeah, it's like the NIS, NIF and, and SNS numbers have been impervious. to the, Portuguese, It's a bit like cockroaches in a nuclear war, isn't it? Portuguese bureaucracy has maintained its stability during the most turbulent times of humanity. I mean, they, they certainly have the time to do so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and that's why, uh, for example, Tabitha has got cephalus. Oh. <laughs> and you're a D6, Article 15, bottom of the barrel, you describe yourself, Tabitha, in the uh, pecking order of visas. Um, something I need to... Oh, we went to Seth. Um, we will get into NIF numbers soon. Uh, sorry, into the NIF soon. I must stop saying number twice. And did I commit the crime, Mr. S, of saying myself personally? I hope I don't do that too often. And sorry if I have done this evening. Um, he went to the CEF in, office in Coimbra and couldn't get past the security guard. That happens. That happens. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, and uh, I, I don't know what to suggest. You're doing it yourself. Or you haven't got uh, some representations, a legal representation with your case by the sound of it, Tabitha. But ask if you've got specific questions to ask, um, try Vitor this evening. And a little point of order, when I go through YouTube, <clears throat> excuse me, when I go through YouTube to join and get my fancy badge, it says I need to sign up again as a supporter. It doesn't recognize me already being one. Um, that's Joao de Nort. Joao de Nort, this is especially for you tonight. He and all Portugal club members who are with us backstage tonight are GMP VIPs. So there are two ways of becoming a member. One is via is, coffee. Is that uh, a Pastel Donata medal? It is the Pastel Donata medal. Would you buy one of those at a Chinese shop? Five, please. <laughs> Okay, you see, that's what you've got, Joel de Nort. John, uh, you've got one of those official uh, GMP VIP badge for you tonight. So it's just two different systems, so that won't show up on YouTube for you there. Okay, uh, let's have a very quick look at the headlines, shall we, and see some of the things that uh, relate to the business, money and finance world. I see in inflation's coming down in Portugal. Would, would you... Do you agree? <laughs> it's a silly question asking if you agree, or does it look like it to you, uh, Vitor Costa, as an everyday gentleman of in the not of the street, but in the street occasionally? Here's the thing: at least for the next one or two months, um, anything can happen. I think, right? Because you, I'm sure you've heard about like what's going on with the golden visas and all of that, and. Of course. Um, so I spoke with a lawyer today. Um, I spoke with my team leader also who spoke with his lawyer today. And essentially their, um, their, their opinions are that um, for the next, at least until the end of March, uh, another lawyer said for about 45 to 60 days because it, it, they're going to, to have um, the meeting on the 16th, it's going to be written into law. It still has to go to the president for approval. Yep, yep. And uh, if they're going to mix in the same law, that thing about the um, the uh, coercive rents, where they want to force people to rent out their 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 homes if they're not being um, occupied, then it's probably going to to get the sort of constitutional. They're going to argue about it, you know, politics. So yeah. it can drag on. What what that means is until it is law um, this year, until it is law, um, applications that go to the SEF for like the golden visa will more than likely, you know, be business as normal. So they'll be able to carry on until the end, which means, I mean, if anybody was thinking about the golden visa, I think everybody's probably going to start buying now. And... Um, yeah. Now, in particular, yes, I do believe that the golden visa would probably cause an impact on uh, probably the um, the prices. So we'll have to um, we'll have to see how that goes. Because one thing about the golden visa is that you you can, for example, buy a five hundred thousand dollar property, and that would uh, allow you to euro, not dollar, but that would allow you to um, to get the golden visa, right? But you can also buy like I don't know, five properties for 100,000, as long as they're in the, the same region, as long as it all adds up to the minimum amount for the golden visa, that can go forward as well. So until that whole golden visa thing is settled, either that it continues or that it will end, I can expect that uh, a lot of people are going to buy in the, the short periods. So prices could go up. Now on the more coastal areas, you know, the Silver Coast, Lisbon, Porto, Algarve, those areas already, you can't buy your own properties for the Golden Visa, but um, you can still invest in uh, businesses or probably a legitimate local, I think you can, because it's considered as a service of sorts. So 
there's all of that to, to take into account. And thank you very much, Juan do Norte. Um, Diana was great to meet and she gave me a lot of ideas as well. So that, that definitely a, a good meeting there. Okay. Um, well, thank you for your analysis there. Um, I, I wasn't my, wasn't the answer I was looking for inflation there, Vitor. But um, what are the, I, oh, right. I, I, I come to you as a as a representative of the Portuguese people, you see. Um, and I think one of these headlines here at the Portugal News is saying that. Oh, uh, then uh, I must apologize, uh, but I'm probably the worst thing from a Portuguese representative <laughs> because I, I'm not sure. The way I think and the way I talk, um, I, I don't recall ever being like the normal person in the room. If that makes that's sense. that's what we love about you, anyway, isn't it? But uh, it's it, the, uh, the I'm just saying, is... don't take me as a measurement for what Portugal is usually like because um, I don't know what I was supposed to be by societal yes. standards. All right, you're not the Portuguese everyman, then you're not the um, the the Zé Povinho, I guess. Um, we could say, all right. Well, some aspects of him you probably are. I think you are. Um, okay, so Portugal News, and looking at the business and uh, finance and money stories over there quickly on the Portugal News, just the headlines, really, unless it really grabs our interest. Uh, what have we got going on? Oh, did you pass through a Via Verde toll by mistake? Uh, you might want to look at that. <laughs> some of us here might want to look at that. Um, information for foreigners regarding NIF numbers. That's what we're going to do. Even the Portugal News calls them NIF numbers. Um, Portuguese pastry, of course, best in the world. Um, yeah. fake driving license warning. I don't know if that's of any interest to anybody. Uh, digital nomads, the new Algarve tourists, uh, allegedly as well, uh, for digital nomads. And um, you can walk across the River Guardiana. I don't know if you want to tie that in with a visit to Seth or finance us at some point as well. So, uh, that's the Portugal news. Let's take a look at the um, the Portugal resident as well. See what's uh, anything of interest to us on the, the Portugal Business Club tonight over on the resident there. Let's have a quick look at their front page, their digital front page anyway, and let's see what's happening right now. Um, let me just bring it onto the screen so you can see it as well, uh, Vitor and everybody else watching. Um, that's a really grisly story, but it's nothing to do with business. Murder suspect detained at Lisbon Airport with bits of meat in suitcase. That is superbly grisly. Let's not mention it anymore. Um, I mean, reusing. <laughs> infrastructure is... There's also a vegan article here. <laughs> that's, that's such an interesting counterpoint on the screen. <laughs> but we'll come to that. Infrastructure's minister tried to dodge a 14,500 euro tax bill. I can't believe it. This is what gives, um, I guess, officials, government officials, a bad name, isn't it? Um, but I, maybe do we just want the name of his accountant? I don't know. Um, I, I like the look of this one. Sorry, Vitor, did you want to add something there? No, I'm just saying that uh, it, it feels like here in Portugal, um, taxes overall are so high that I, I would say, I don't know, 70, 80% of businesses, maybe they all try and find some ways you know, to not pay taxes and whatever. And it's like a free for all that goes from all the way to the top to the bottom. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, they don't actually exactly say that in the tourist information, do they? Taxes are so high here. Even the infrastructures minister tried to dodge his tax bill. Allegedly, I should say as well. That's not what's in the um, in, in the public information. But yes, well, I take your point there. There's the breaking news about inflation. February inflation registers fourth consecutive fall down to 8.2 percent still pretty high um, but down to 8.2 percent they say at the portugal resident in the breaking news there um we have portugal's shoemakers sign pact to go green i'd like to look at that um because i see that as a bit of an industry and business story but some of the other headlines here vegans and vegetarians set the record straight diet is cheapest not most expensive i guess it depends on whether how much processed food you buy right any other uh, business stories here People power thwarts luxury development on last untouched stretch of coastline. That wasn't easy to read. And PM and Housing Minister, this is what you were referring to earlier on, that uh, big plan that came out uh, a week or two ago that caused a lot of controversy. Uh, PM and Housing Minister hold Q&A on government's Maish Habitation plan. That's the big controversy of the moment. And Lagos, low season. This is the digital nomads again. So the, the low season in the Algarve, by the sound of it, makes a great home for digital nomads who are enjoying those cheaper rates of uh, stays uh, in the Algarve before all the holiday makers arrive there in earnest in the summer. Um, okay, and thousands demonstrate in Lisbon over rising cost of living. Uh, that was uh, last weekend, I believe. Okay, so let's have a bit, a bit of a, a look. Before we go into the NIF number, let's have a look at this rather lovely article here. 
uh, which is uh, features a pair of trainers and uh, is about Portugal shoemakers. One of many great industries that is unsung here, right, Vitor? Do you know much about the, uh, the the diverse industrial base of Portugal? Does that come across your radar very much? The what? It, it's amazing how many things are made here. The, the, there is so much industry that is not obvious. But, uh, for example, Portugal still makes lots of footwear, and not a lot of mm -hmm. people know that. And uh, here they yeah. are. The yeah, for example, um, in Barcelos, and uh, the surrounding areas, the textile industry is huge. Exactly. Like, Who uh, knew that? That's not footwear. We're talking about textiles and fabrics, aren't we? Yeah, fabrics, clothing brands, all of these things. Like uh, when I was growing up, like my my aunt, she's uh, what you call it? She she does the sewing thing. She was the clothier. He seamstress. Let's let's call her a seamstress. seamstress. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, she would do that. She still does that to this day. My my mom would do that on and off, um, and so a lot of my uncles and everything they were on the um, also on the clothing a business. Some would do like imprints and t-shirts. Others would handle materials. Others would do designs and stuff. And uh, I do know many business owners that have giant like textile industries with tons of employees. And another thing is, here in Viana do Castelo, we actually have a, a windmill uh, production facility. Really? Well, old-fashioned or the new turbines? No, like the, the new um, wind, wind, wind turbines, yeah. windmill to wind turbines to generate electricity, yeah. Fantastic. There you go. And cork as well. I mean, I, I, it gives me great pleasure every time I open a bottle of wine here. Not only the great value oh. and great taste of the wine here, but they still use cork. Uh, for You're showing my wallet. Is, your, is it made of cork as well? Or is it just the smell of wine? I mean, it, it is slightly used, so uh, the colors are not the best. But it yes. is not only cork, but it is a sweetheart's handkerchief. I've had a, an argument with Mrs. Munson about this. Is it a cork lookalike fabric? Or is it really cork, Vitor? No, it, it is really cork. Um, I mean, I don't think it's only cork. They, they have fabric in here somewhere. Yeah. But uh, it is definitely a thin cork that is then sewed together. Because if it was too thick, uh, it would be more brittle. And yeah. um, and not able to hold all of that money of yours, of course. So, and I think you're, you have you ex you've applied for planning permission uh, for your wallet, haven't you, to to be able to hold all the money that's coming your way uh, soon? I think. Okay, Portugal shoemakers sign back to go green. Portugal becomes first European country to commit to making footwear industry sustainable how about that well done portugal uh, 120 companies in portugal's footwear industry 120 companies in portugal's footwear industry you see responsible for 100 million euros of exports this is incredible and, and it's not the only industry that's really unsung and underrated in my view they've signed a green commitment to contribute to a carbon neutral planet in a ceremony in porto uh, chaired by the european commissioner for the environment and also virginia and also attended by the Minister of Environment and Climate Action, Duarte Cordero, and Secretary of State for the Economy, Pedro Silinho, the signatory companies of the Portuguese Shoes Green Pact, committed to work and contribute to the goals set by the UN and Europe of a planet with zero carbon emissions in 2050 and a reduction by half in 2030. Well done, those companies. But look at that. I think the really important and interesting thing there, um, we have... Uh, 100 million euros of exports and 10,000 jobs um, in Portuguese footwear industry. Um, and what's this? Uh, for Manuel Carlos, executive president of the Portuguese Association of Footwear Components, Leather and Goods, and its implements, the API CCAPS. It is a great challenge for the sectors of the industry, which provide employment for more than 40,000 people overall and export more than 2 billion to 170 markets. That is extraordinary, Vitor. Did you know that, that this was going on in your very own country? Yes, I did that myself. Uh, I, was, I, I was not very aware of that, actually. So uh, I learned something here today. That's one of the reasons why I come here. Um, and yeah, that, that is pretty interesting indeed. It's like, great, isn't it? That's a, a lot of money and a lot of jobs there, right here in Portugal. Fantastic. And in real work as well, you know. Uh, I'm not saying that digital is not real work. I mean, who am I to throw stones in my position? But isn't it lovely that people are still making things, making real things here in Portugal? I love that. Um, so a little bit of um, PA work for me, for you here. 
Um, Victor, did you get email and WhatsApp items I sent you? Looking forward to hearing back. Obrigada from uh, Suze. Joao is here. Joao Mendoza is here. Good night, Carl. Uh, March of which year? That's this year when the government are looking at my habitat. Yeah, the, this year, yes. Yeah, I think that's like just... a month or two. Yeah, Tabitha's a little bit sore about being at the bottom of the queue there, and I can understand that. Vito, hi, girl, Diane said you were tremendous. Look at you, and much appreciated. And a question oh, about the lift. I, I can show you a picture that I took at um, at the place where we went. Just, uh, it's uh, an overhead view of uh, Ponte de Lima, kind of. Okay. This is your meeting with um, Diane, is it? Yes. Okay, very good. And it was market day, so you can have um, you can probably see about I don't know three four percent of the whole market in this picture. Really, a, so and a big, a lovely market. big market in Pontelima. Which what is market day in Pontelima? Is it Monday? Uh, it's every other Monday. Every other Monday. So, okay. oh, the the calendar I have here is for twenty twenty two, but uh, I, I think we can find it at the um, at the town hall website. It's mm -hmm. like, so we had it on this Monday. So next Monday will not, there will not be a market, but the next one after will. Okay. I'm and sorry. usually on Sundays it's smaller, but, um, but you have an antique market as well. Very nice. And have you got that picture? Uh, I, I sent it to your WhatsApp. Oh, I see. You know, you've got a, a present button at your end as well. You're able to share things on your screen, you know. But, but I'm shy. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, sorry to put you on the spot like that. Must that must have been awful for you? Okay, was, I'll, 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 I'll spark up. They literally that. died. <laughs> Stay with me, Vitor. Is there any benefit of getting a NIF before you're imminently in the process of moving to Portugal? Since you need an address and representative, it seems like it's best to wait until moving. What would you say on that? Well, um, if you can get it done, it might actually be a good idea because you don't need a local address to get the NIF. If you have a representative, they will, um, you know, represent you, and they will, um, um, they will put their address. Because the 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 thing of the address is that, let's say, when you request your password to to connect to the financiers so that you can log in, or when you, you know, when they need to send you government information, that's the address that they need to send it to, and it needs to be local. So if you don't have a local address, then you would have to have a representative so that they could get your correspondence. And um, and yeah, that, that's kind of how it works. And if, if for example, you get yourself a NIF and they start sending you things and yet they're not being opened, you might get fined in, in not having a representative. So it is, in, it is a very important and you, and you have to exercise some care. Um, when getting a NIF number and we'll go into this more when um, we look at the new guide and I've put the link to it if you want to get ahead of uh, us here and you want to download your own copy that's the link to do it um, that I've just put uh, onto the screen now it's worth having that um, to read when you can't sleep at night or if you really just are one of those people that loves all the detail um, there is the new guide right there for you so thank you for that question no Portuguese property bubble says by Randy if you draw a line from pre-2007 Crash to today it is a steady, gradual price increase. Who knows what's around the corner, though, by handy. NubiNet, if you work with EI, of course, they will allow you to use their address and they will act as your fiscal representative. Thank you very much for that, uh, John. Um, and Portugal is still, says well, 28th in the overall prosperity index ranking since 2011. The country itself has high income, advanced economy and high living standards, even though we are ranked among the top five countries for expats. Thank you very much. Uh, was the guy with the body parts in his suitcase a vegan? Sadly not, it turns out, and I've spared you the gory details of that article. Um, it is grim, and he certainly was not a vegan, is the suspicion, I think, of the people investigating that case. Sorry to blab, but not at all, Joel. That was a very interesting bit of information. Thank you very much for that. And I love it how, even though you live in the UK, you still talk in the real, royal we of Portugal. Uh, yes, they do indeed make shoes. I've purchased them. Me too. I've got some lovely Portuguese boots and a fantastic Portuguese coat from um, the wonderful Truja Mosha. Um, in Coimbra, I think they've got a shop in Aveiro as well. Um, yes, that's as a paying customer. It seems that will be appropriate within 18 months or so of a move. I think that's uh, relating to EI there. Appreciate a quick response, Vitor. You're the best, Vitor. What did you do? No, I exist. Okay, that's enough as far as I'm concerned. And that should be enough for all of us human beings, shouldn't it? 
Um, hold on a minute. What, what have you put on the screen? There, there you there go. That's you know. the picture. All right. There That's just go. a tiny bit of it, is it? Yeah. So this, uh, so it goes a really long ways to the left. This is, I don't know, I would say about 4% of the whole market. Um, so you, you really, you really can find almost everything here because uh, it goes all the way in both directions. In fact, wait, l l let's bring my, my useful friend, Google maps. I do want to turn that corner. Uh, so I'll let you, I'll let you find the, uh, find it on Google maps. So we can have a little look around Ponte Lima. Have you noticed most shows, a good, anything good morning Portugal related, tends to have a little bit of a Ponte Lima propaganda in it. There's no escape from the, from the wonder and beauty of the place. <laughs> and there are two highly trained agents in our company this evening. Um, high income, everything I read, read states low income. Yeah, what was is, what did you say there, Joao? Um, high, has high income advanced economy i guess it's all relative these the, certainly portuguese people aren't the best paid in the world that's for sure and i, I think that needs a bit of nuance uh, examination in there but yeah well said tabitha um evening all from a windswept north of france my goodness isn't it amazing what you can do with airplanes uh, salvation air force with us in faro this morning and now in the north of france give my regards to my auntie if you bump into her over there please salvation air force thank you for the answer confirm what i thought i'll be patient excellent well done Nubianet. and you okay, got it Oh, he loves the buy. Look, John loves the uh, uh, PDL Pondalima biweekly market. Everything from underwear that's fun to wear to fruit trees you can take home to plant. They need him on the team, don't they? Writing copy like that. Come on, let's have a look then. What, what have we got? We've got to look at NIF numbers. We're nearly out of time. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, just real quick, that picture is about this area here. And the market comes from here, this whole d dashed green line. Yeah. Uh, gets around here, it takes, you know, this whole road, the sand lot, and it goes all the way up here. And how beautiful that it's by the river where you can see the centurion sculptures as well, right? Yes, that is correct. Very good. Anyway, well, if, and by thanks. the way, you can say NIF number, it, it, it reduces ambiguity and it's easier for someone who's hearing it for the first time to understand. And I'm not going to get out of the habit, am I? Let's face it. That's, that's no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. It's easier to understand that way. Okay. So information for foreigners regarding, and they, they've done it here on the uh, Portugal News. This is where I found out about it. Thank you, Portugal News, uh, for this excellent article here. The so there's 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 some rich information right from the get go here. Uh, people need to know what uh, the AT is, uh, the tax authority. Not obviously in Portuguese. What does um, AT stand for in Portuguese, Vitor? Autoridad Tributaria. There you go. Um, has reinforced information regarding assigning a tax number, the NIF, to a foreign citizen in Portugal. Why is it also called the TIN number, T-I-N? Yeah, I, I think that's the, the English name for it, I guess. Uh, is it? Okay. I mean, I, I know that in America they have the TIN number, which is tax identification number. And... Um, in Portuguese, it's número de identificação fiscal. So instead of tax, it's fiscal, which yes. kind of ends up being a similar thing. All right. All very interesting information. So AT, uh, NIF, and TIN are all useful um, acronyms, abbreviations to know. And if all goes according to plan and you've got your NIF um, and you go to the AT, uh, the Autoridad or oh, Tributa, sorry, what was it again, AT? Tributaria. Tributaria, there you go. Um, you should end up here at the Portal das Finanças, or the finance portal, which looks like this. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's never much fun to go here, let's face it. <laughs> but this is where you'll find out about all your obligations. And interestingly, everything is there, isn't it, Vitor? If I can ask you this as a Portuguese... Citizen, There's way too much in there. I never know that. where to find where, what I need to. Not even you. <laughs> Pages and pages and pages and pages of uh, links and hyperlinks. Yeah. And then they change the pages from one thing to the other. It's like, hey, accountant, can you do this for me, please? Okay. So even a Portuguese person has trouble with this because it is there's so much on it. And that's everything from what? Uh, if you're a self-employed person, you can raise your invoices on here. 
Um, yeah. you, can, you can download PDFs of all the people who are being named and shamed for being behind with their taxes and social security. And like your, your car circulation tax and all of those things and your IRS and all of that. And uh, pr probably another reason why it's difficult to understand it well is because you don't use it, use it all that often, maybe once a year or, or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, as a side note, and this is of particular interest to, uh, to our viewers. That website is also where the landlords can submit their contracts to, um, you know, to the finances so that they can then have that document saying they pay the taxes and everything with your NIFs um, so that you can then take to SEF and say, hey, here's my residency. Everything is OK and legal. And I'll be like, okie dokie. Yeah. OK. And this is something else that we should talk about while we're here. I have a serious question for Vitor. OK. Act serious, Vitor. Please explain the need to provide your NIF when you purchase groceries or other whatnot. My understanding is for taxes, but the max you can get refunded is 250 euros. Is that correct? Now, yes. this is this is the place where you also validate your spending, isn't it? So yes. in here, you, whenever somebody in a supermarket has said to you, contrary went and asked you for your NIF, and you've given them your NIF, you can validate that spending because you'll see it turning up here in this portal. Yep. And yep. it will be your allowances against all manner of things, like food, car repairs, hairdressers, veterinary bills, all sorts of tax headings. You get relief. So that's a great question um, that's coming from John there. Um, and yes. so that's what you'll need to do from time to time is go in and validate those so you can get tax relief. And you're absolutely right, John. There are maximums on that. You don't get tax relief on everything you spend. It's up to a maximum amount, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's a little bit more than that. So in general, so first of all, you don't need to ever give your NIF. Uh, I usually don't nowadays, uh, but I'm going to start doing it with a company and whatever, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, but um, the incentive that the places where you should maybe give the NIF is that if you're at the higher income bracket, like I think it's if you get more than 10,000 or something along those lines, but then if you have a couple, you can also do it together and you add both, divide by two. Um, so if you get up to a certain amount, then uh, that's when you would start paying taxes. Because if you're like at the minimum wage, you don't have to pay taxes yeah. uh, by default. Uh, but um, if you do are higher, what happens is whenever you go buy something, you can, you can put your NIF in there. You tell them yeah. your number. People will type it on the, the computer and that gets automatically added to 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 your account there. Yeah. And it is about 250, but you have different categories where it can cap. So, for example, groceries are one thing. It can go up to like 250 deduction in taxes and that's it. But, for example, healthcare is another category where if you spend uh, money on, on healthcare and you put your NIF there, that can be, I think, another 250 that can be taken off your taxes. And there are a bunch of categories. Some of them count towards, you know, that tax write off or however you want to call it. Some don't. I don't necessarily remember all of them, but um, I can speak to, to the accountant and confirm that. We'll, we'll bring yeah. one here. We will bring an accountant here one evening. Oh, who nice. will answer those, those. I think that's that's the best thing to do, isn't it, is to get an expert definitely, on, definitely. Who, who can take. Well, and we'll have a, you know, we'll have a tax clinic. And a, and a NIF clinic uh, here, which I think is a um, a really good idea. Because like you say, I mean, even for Portuguese people, this is quite a nightmare. Um, so I think it, it, it's a doubly so for foreigners, and we need extra help. Yeah. Now, this is one of the incentives, isn't it, for giving a NIF yeah. number? It's every month the car is won by somebody who's given their NIF Apparently. number. Apparently. Yes. yes. <laughs> Apparently. Okay. I, mean, I guess it's an idea to incentivize people. <laughs> and you don't have to give your NIF number. All right, that you 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 will be asked for it because I think they're obliged to ask you, but you don't have to give it, which is also useful information, so you don't find yourself in an awkward and embarrassing situation. Carl, how have you lived in Portugal? Very well, thank you. I think what you meant to ask was how long? Five years, and I'm embarrassed to say um, I should have known. I should know and have learned a lot more by now, uh, the language and the culture. But I blame the pandemic. I, I've been here for five years. Two of them were pandemic, almost three, which was the same month repeated over and over again so i've only really been here for a couple of years is how i see it um of note individual taxpayer identification numbers are fairly rare in the united states and itin is only used when someone is ineligible for social security but needs to file a, a tax an income tax return thank you tom smith for that 
And uh, there are, of course, experts in Portuguese accountancy, and there are experts in American accountancy, but there aren't many experts in both. You tend Let to need... know if you know any. I still have American tax returns from like one or two years ago that I need to fill in, and I have no idea how. American? Yes. What, from online activity? Pro probably YouTube. Okay. All right. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, don't worry. There'll just be fines and penalties mounting up somewhere in... Um, in the Pentagon or somewhere like that. Um, okay, as you get automatically entered into a Portuguese government lottery. Okay, that's that's the, how you can win the car, folks. Um, so that's really that's worth knowing. But I, I think a lot of pe Portuguese people do not give their NIF numbers, do they? Beatles? Right, and and again, it brings back to what I was saying. Uh, one of the reasons they are doing this is to prevent like money laundering and things of that nature. Because yeah. if you you know, declare your NIF and you have like 10,000 in expenses, but you only declared 5,000. It's like, hey, man, how come are you, you're spending more than what you're earning? What's going on? Exactly. Exactly. Um, which um, has people, I guess, caught red handed, a bit like the uh, earlier infrastructures uh, minister who we mentioned as well. Allegedly. Right. OK, so fascinating stuff. And we've only got a few minutes left, so we might have to carry this forward to next week. It will run and run, won't it? Tax. Um, NIF number, oh, yeah. all of it will, will just be a recurring theme, which we will return to for sure. But I do want to bring this to your attention. It's very important that you see this so that you at least can check out the information for yourself. This is the new nine page document uh, tax identification number to foreign citizens, to non residents. Um, registration as a taxpayer, registration as a taxpayer is mandatory for all citizens, nationals, or foreigners, residents, or non residents who, under the law, are subject to tax compliance or wish to exercise their rights before the Autoridad Tributaria. I.e., oh, there's another bit of the AT, the Aduanera. Um, registration as a taxpayer implies obtaining a tax identification number, so they are calling it a TIN in English. You're absolutely right, NIF in Portuguese, TIN in English and is an essential condition for many acts of everyday life. The acts of everyday life, not only fiscal, but also related to employment, contracts, opening of bank accounts, or social security. So very important to Portuguese life. Um, essential, really. The ten, to be assigned to a natural person is a number consisting of nine digits, the first eight being sequential, and the last one a check digit. Currently, the initial digit is three, and always remains the same whether the citizen is registered as resident or non-resident and on it goes i've given you the link to download this for yourself so you can mm -hmm. find it a final thought vitor um this um this nif number if i may repeat myself in that way um is possibly it just occurred to me earlier on today and i thought you might have a view on this is a precursor to the central bank digital identity thing isn't it given that portugal has this nif number that is central to portuguese daily life and that there is uh, the MB Way system, which is connected deeply into one's telephone and mobile device. Portugal is quite well set up for these um, new digital IDs that relate to your finances, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so. Like the, the one thing about Portugal is that even though you know we're a relatively small country, and as you said, we're not the uh, compared to other countries, we're not the most well paid or anything. We're surprisingly technological in many areas. I, I don't know if it's like governments, you know, politicians that are filling their pockets somehow by bringing technologies in. But what uh, yes. what the fact is that a lot yeah. of what um, we do have is, seems to be more advanced than in many cases. On other cases, as you probably well know, it's very uh, much more inefficient. Real estate, of course, is probably the one that, that, that I would mention the most. We don't have MLS and uh, sometimes it's a bit tricky. But yeah, I mean, um, a lot of that information is just people very much so go with the flow here. Like yes. uh, I've had them um, not to get too much into political arguments or anything, but I've had clients that came here from America. Some, you know, they don't want to wear masks and had those things with COVID. Others always wore their masks and did what they were told. And I hear of many uh, cases of conflict. Because if you didn't wear a mask, like you were killing grandma and all of these things, and people would attack you or yell at you on the street. If you were wearing a mask, people would start insulting you that you were wearing a face diaper and take that off your face. So yes. the, it, it, there was like always this thing. And here in Portugal, people are like, oh, everybody's telling us to wear a mask and let's all wear a mask, whatever. As soon as everybody said, hey, go, uh, you, you don't have to wear your mask anymore, people are like, okay, we won't. 
Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, very interesting. That that was it was it was of all the places to be in the world. It's a little bit like you know the threat of recession, a global crisis. It's all relative, isn't it? And and as as pandemics went, being in Portugal was a good place to be, I think, relatively speaking. And it's the same for the future. I think this is a great place to be, notwithstanding all the you know some of the dark and negative things that we're talking about that may be coming our way. So a great place to be. I think that's an important note to include. Um, also on the uh, finances, you can uh, grass on your neighbour. Do you understand that um, little uh, idiom there from from the UK? Grass. What would what would you take to mean? From grassing on your neighbor kind of like uh being nosy about your neighbor and see what you they're can, up to if you if you fear they're not paying enough tax you can tell the authorities oh. <laughs> a telltale i don't know what that is in portuguese <laughs> yeah, that can be somewhat common and uh, in fact you know particularly in the more rural areas you know where uh, people still build their home ho own homes and whatever it's yeah. quite common that you'll see like some home that already is or someone is already living there and then you see like a structure that they were building like a new room or something like that which has been a balcony for years what happens there is that they're like hey i'm going to you know to upgrade my house and the neighbor is like that guy is, is building something i'm going to tell the town hall that he is just to make sure he has proper licensing and many times they don't so hey, you can't build anymore. Okay, it's about it. maybe you could do that on the finances portal as well, but you can't buy Seth a new phone on the finances portal, as far as I'm aware. So sorry about that, Tabitha. Thank you for being so good humoured about your situation. Don't worry, workers at the IRS don't know how to fill out tax forms either. And very important to share here from John, a fair warning: if you are from the US, beware failure to file your F bar, your financial reporting form. Uh, for any foreign bank account is up to ten thousand dollars there ouch thank you for that john and thank you Vitor, for being here this evening of course thank you for having me i hope i was of value to everybody in visualizing this <laughs> visualizing this why well, the button i meant to press was this thank you thank you Vitor. Uh, stick around, mate. We're going to welcome the uh, Portugal club in Portugal club members into the lock-in after the show. But thank you, everybody else who's been here this evening. Really appreciate you being here. And let's have a Munson's money moment. Don't forget to get your currency from SpartanFX.co.uk or send them an email to GMP at SpartanFX.co.uk. See you next week, Vitor, and everybody else who'd care to join us for part two of the NIF special. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>